Dragons in death, cause they are fun. Okay, there's a few things. There's a few things, okay? So we're gonna go <clears throat> through these first. Okay, I guess uh, Cal Drogo is a very powerful cow. Like, he's the richest one of the Dothraki. And they have a headquarters called Vase Dothrak. That's like... Uh, I think a holy place or somewhere or it's some place he's got to go and um, I guess calls have things called Kalasars or Kalasars and his is huge <clears throat> right and uh, they tend to be like nomadic and go at their own pace um, he's called them because in like the Dothraki customs and stuff uh, it says all important things must be done under the stars, like, you know, in open air. So we're, we're coming in, uh, like a day before the wedding and, um, he's called his Colossar, which is giant. Like there's 40,000, uh, just Dothraki walking around and they're what you'd expect, you know, nomadic riders. Like, they're all leather vests, bare-chested, even the women, you know. Uh, horse hair, um, like leggings, and just bronze buckles and everything. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to say less filler words. Just bronze buckles. They're greasing their hair down and greasing their braids running around being wild because when they're in the city like when they're in pentos they kind of act a certain way but because the whole colossar came and like set up it's just like dothraki woodstock basically and they're being crazy and this kind of pan too and there's illyrio there's mormont there's uh, Viserys sitting there and I'm pretty sure Danny is around it's the day before the wedding and Illyrio as as he does is just sitting there like munching on chicken getting his beard all greasy or duck it's honey duck and Viserys is like brooding a little bit and stuff and Illyrio is talking and he's like this is getting wild like the other magisters have already tripled the guard and stuff uh we do hopefully this won't go on too long or pentos is gonna go broke and her brother who has not been kicked in the head by a horse yet uh, <laughs> he's sitting there and he's like i'd give him to her tomorrow you know as long as he pays and illyrio's like trying to be like hey calm down or whatever and it's also important to know uh mormont is there because as soon as all these dothraki started showing up he's like hey i'll get you back and viserys is like yeah <laughs> you know like instantly so mormont's basically been around like he's part of the clique now and they're talking and he's like dude everything's been negotiated it's fine you know nom, 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 nom. and stuff basically like don't worry about it it'll happen and he's like if he pays and he's like you know you should probably chill with that <laughs> a little bit like because he's gotta he's gotta marry your sister then he's gotta go across the plains to vase dothrak then he's gotta present your sister then they gotta go talk to the omens or whatever get an omen reading and if it favors war then you're gonna get your soldiers <laughs> you know but uh, Viserys does not like this idea and stuff and I kind of have a theory that Illyrio human trafficked both Viserys and Danny. you know that's why he was buttering them up the entire time and stuff because he set up the whole deal and like he knew you know Danny is like a princess you know from across the sea and she's like one of a kind so he's basically just playing Viserys like the entire time Viserys Viserys either way 
uh, she's playing him and he's just so delusional. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna get an army. This is gonna be awesome. Da da da. Because both him and Mormont are like, woo, chill, you know? And Mormont even chimes in at this point and he's like, I don't think Mormont's in on it. I think he's just, you know, talking. But he's like, yeah, they, they kind of move at their own pace, man. And, uh, it can take a little bit. But, uh, you know, like you can you can ask favors of a call, but you really don't want to make demands because they got that temper, you know, especially coming from like a lesser person. And <laughs> this triggers Viserys so bad. He's like, I'm the dragon. <laughs> All right. The dragon does not beg. I'm not lesser than anyone. I'll have your tongue cut out. Right. <laughs> and. He like throws a little fit and and all that and uh something else gets said. But yeah, that's basically when it gets played out like everything that'll happen and whatnot. And uh he you know, he cuts at his sister like once or twice and she's just shrinking because the thing about Danny that I'm starting to realize is she's just never not been abused. You know, like her family got murdered and then she's been stuck with her brother and stuff. She keeps going back to that one like sweet time where uh, she had her own room and stuff. And she just she's never had security like ever because immediately it kind of cuts to her having a super bad nightmare where you know she's like running away naked and her brother's just beating her saying like oh you woke the dragon you woke the dragon and then like she falls down and then all of a sudden he's gone and there's just these giant pillars of fire and there's like this black molten dragon and it turns and they lock eyes and then she wakes up super shook you know and you know she stays that scared until like you know, it's it's the wedding because she's freaking out about the wedding, you know, because basically they're shipping her off to some call. Now, for the wedding, um, all of his Kalisar have built like this giant dirt ramp and, the, and they're at the very top. Like, uh, you know, Drogo and Danny are sitting at the top and then it's like his blood riders who I'm guessing are like his best men. You know, and then right underneath that, that's where like Illyrio and Mormont and uh, Viserys is still unkicked by a horse. And Viserys is just fuming the whole time because, you know, he's like two steps down. And apparently her wedding is supposed to be all about him. You know, so he's just sitting there like, hmm. And like every time the servants bring like food, you know, or anything for them and then give him like what's left, uh, he's just getting more and more mad. He's, mm, you know, meanwhile, Illyria is just, mm, 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 you know, minding his own and Mormont's just kind of chilling, sitting wherever. Now, this wedding is wild right like because you know the dothraki it was basically like woodstock now the show's on so like there's people running around hollering all sorts of stuff danny is shook like because they don't even speak the same language like he knows like a couple of words in valerian she knows no dothraki and he's not looking at her right so he's just kind of partying it up at his wedding he's like yelling to his blood riders they're yelling back and people are laughing you know the rest of the dothraki are just setting it off running around uh drinking and everything and to his credit like there's there's a bunch of women they start dancing and whatnot and they're like trying to be sexy and danny even notes like his, his face just the whole time he just like my wife's here but but his eyes are giving him away. Like, he's like, you know, like watching them. And every once in a while, I'll throw them like a bronze medallion so they can fight over it. But, you know, Mormont and Illyrio have told Danny, it's like, this is going to get crazy. Okay. <laughs> and that's when it starts getting crazy. Like the Dothraki men and stuff. Cause they were like, 
look, they got different morals and stuff. They kind of mate and stuff like wild. So, the, you know, the girls are dancing, trying to show off for the call, get some medals and stuff. And then the men start like grabbing the girls and just going for it, like right in front of everybody because they don't know modesty. And this keeps happening. And then two dudes try to grab the same girl and they just whip their swords out. They're like swinging them above their heads and stuff. They got the, like these curved blades. It's like half scythe, half sword, you know, <laughs> and like boom, he just cuts the dude almost in half, you know, and cuts off his, uh, his braid or whatever. And it, he, Illyrio told her is like, if there's not at least three deaths, it's considered pretty tame. And I guess, uh, skipping ahead, there's like 12 deaths at this wedding. So it's, it's that kind of, you know, it's like a three towel situation anyway. So they're, they're partying, going crazy and all this. And then, uh, you know, the call just grabs her and puts her up cause it's time for the gifts because the whole time she's just been shell-shocked everybody's too loud everything's too wild she can't speak to anybody so she's sitting there just talking to herself and the whole time like this entire wedding she's just like she's like i am the blood of the dragon you know like trying to psych herself up and give herself strength and she's like i'm the descendant of Ag Aegon the conqueror um you know i am the blood of the dragon but now it's time for her to get gifts, you know? So like everybody's kind of whatever. And uh, Illyrio, Mormont, and her brother are like the first ones there. So her brother's like, I got you three maidens and I'm sure I'm supposed to know their names because they're probably going to come up because there's are maids, you know, but uh, I am blanking so hard on their names right now. But one is to teach her uh, Dothraki, you know, like, so she can speak to her husband. One is supposed to teach her, like, how to ride and, you know, like, the Dothraki stuff. And then the third one is supposed to teach her her womanly uh, duties and stuff. And both her brother and Illyrio being the greasy pieces of crap they are, are like yeah we tested her out she knows what she's doing you know what i mean <laughs> but uh the the first two are dothraki the other one is like just blonde and super fair and so they basically bought her someone you know to have around I, as far as i'm guessing and then uh mormont comes up and he's like look i'm a broke exile uh, I'm sorry that this isn't, you know, very lavish. And he gives her a bunch of storybooks from the old kingdom, like the seven kingdoms, and they're written in common so she can actually read them, you know, and her just, I, I, I guess like that's what she wanted. Cause she like deeply thanks him and she's like, Oh, I love these, you know, <laughs> and stuff. Cause you know, now she's got something to read, right? And then Illyrio comes out and he brings his giant chest and it's full of all this velvet and damask and stuff. And right on top, uh, there's there's these three giant eggs. And Danny is not not stupid. She's like, yeah, he can afford it because he just made a fortune off selling her to the call. Basically, he got like horses and slaves for days you know, doing all of this, which kind of made the penny drop for me. Like he was playing them the whole time and now he's shipping them off. And then he's just going to be there with all the horses and the slaves, you know, at the end of it. But anyway, um, there's these giant eggs and they look like kind of scaly and stuff. And she picks the first one up and like, she thinks it's going to be dainty and it's not, it's like heavy. She's got to use both hands and she's like what are these because they're like super pretty you know and uh he's like i know i'm gonna mess this up but he's like these are dragon eggs from uh you know beyond the unknown lands beyond a shy and uh i don't know about the pronunciation it's kind of 
spelled like ass high. So, <laughs> ass high? No, but I will say a shy. So, um, he says like, you know, they're so old that they've been petrified to stone, but it felt like a fitting, um, it felt like a fitting present. And she's holding them and they're kind of cool. Like one's like green and it's got like bronze on it and they're kind of like color effects, you know, and stuff when she turns it. You know, another one that says is like cream with gold and uh, kind of doing the same thing. And then there's another one that's like black and it's got like red swirls all over it. So she's like, okay, bet, you know. And she puts him back, and it's super awesome for her. And then, then uh, and they, they told her this was coming. They are like, okay, now the Blood Riders are going to give you weapons. And they all have names too, but I, I, I remember Hogo, I think. <laughs> but the first one comes up. He, you know, displays a, a like a whip with like a silver handle that's really nice. And then there's a an Auroch you know and it's all trimmed and super nice and then the third one is like this double recurve bow that's giant and uh i think it's made of dragon bone and it's super nice and she's like oh these are gifts for a great warrior uh and i am but a woman <laughs> give them to my husband so i guess he gets presents you know from his groomsmen i guess and he's just like over there like oh well i guess i got some new <laughs> you know stuff anyway then it's kind of a free-for-all they're just like all right everybody else start giving presents and she just gets piles of girly stuff like dresses and needles and perfume and stuff at one point and they mention uh she gets a, a dress from like the the silk of a thousand mice <laughs> and even Illyria was like that's a pretty piece you know but like she just has piles of girly stuff everywhere and then when that's done uh the cow gets up and he just like walks down and everybody kind of parts ways and he comes back and he's kind of like like oprah he's like you get a new car you know but uh the the car in question is like the pride of the calisar's horses it's like the nicest horse ever and it's like silver and it's got like smoky silver mane and stuff and instantly danny's just like in love with this horse because like it's kind of like a horse movie moment she's just like oh my god and she's petting it and stuff and the and the call like literally just picks her up and puts her on the horse like bloop, bloop, you know because she's tiny he's large or whatever and she, nobody had told her like she was gonna have to ride or anything so she's like oh no <laughs> And, like, she's okay-ish on a horse. She's not, like, great. So she's sitting here like, oh, don't fall over, you know? <laughs> but apparently it's, like, a super horse, you know, because it's the pride of, of these. So, like, as soon as she nudges it a little bit, it's, like, reading her mind. And it starts taking off. And she's going faster than, like, she wants. But instead of, like, you know, like, she's like, yeah, you know? <laughs> And she takes off and everybody's getting out of the way. And, you know, because they're rioters and stuff, all the Dothraki are sitting there like, yeah, I'll get it. Like, because basically, you know, she got she got like a new car and then jumped in it and started burning donuts in the parking lot. You know, so they're all like, yeah, and she's she's running. And then there's the big fire right in front of her. And instead of like stopping, she like jumps to fire and stuff and she's just like hold on hold on let's see if we can do this she's like <laughs> right over the fire and stuff and the dothraki are like yeah right and then she she stops and illyrio is standing next to her and she's like tell him that he's he gave me the wind you know like she's like i love this horse i was, a, I was a, i'm fast as fuck boy <laughs> you know 
and uh Illyrio translates it to Drogo and that's the first time she's seen Drogo smile because he's like yeah that's what's up you know because maybe he was like a car guy and he's like hey we got something in common right but while she's still up there uh he starts calling for his horse and she notices like the sun's going down so it's about that part of the wedding night and uh and her little piece of crap brother and this is so heart-wrenching for me because she's on a horse all she had to do was make the horse kick him in the face but she doesn't but he walks up and he like grabs her her thigh and like squeezes it and he's like if you don't do a good job uh the dragon's gonna wake up like it's never woken up before just being a little meh and stuff and instantly like the one time she stopped feeling fear and stuff just goes away and she feels like this super vulnerable little girl again who's just alone and being given to this giant guy with a cruel face and she's like crap you know so like he gets like this really lean red mare and he's like leading her off and she's following behind him on her horse and the whole time she's just freaking out like tensed up i'm not gonna lie hearing it i'm just tensed up with her and she's like, <coughs> I'm the blood of the dragon. I'm the blood of the dragon. You know, uh, I have the blood of Aegon the Conqueror in me. I'm the blood of the dragon. Like trying to make herself <coughs> feel better. And they go way out there. Like she's she's just trailing them, just dreading it the whole time. And then, you know, uh, finally they hit this little thing and they start getting, <coughs> getting uh, down. <laughs> or whatever and he kind of like pulls her down and she loses it at this point like she's she's had enough like this dude's giant he's standing heads over her and stuff she's just uh, like a kind of fragile little little girl or woman you know and uh she starts crying and stuff and he's just like no you know and he like wipes her tear away and she realizes like he knows what no means so they have one word in common and he's like no no you know and he starts like softening up you know like a lot and he he picks her up and he puts her on the rock and stuff so like they're kind of eye to eye and he's like no you know like and then he's like really gently taking the bells out of his braid and whatever and he does like one of those cover girl hair flips he's like right i know i know master hair flipper anyway <laughs> so um you know he he like fans it out and like he's like slowly getting undressed and he keeps saying no he's like no you know like basically like you know chill out like it's okay and uh that, that was super surprising for me you know that he like softened and he's trying to put her at ease and stuff and then he you know starts undressing her and there's a little bit of uncomfortableness where they graphically describe him fondling her a little bit and stuff but before like anything super crazy happens um you know like his, he's kind of his hand like he pauses on her belly and and Cal Drogo apparently understands consent because like they're going and he's like no you know and and then you know at that point she was kind of vibing and she's into it and he's being sweet and whatever so she's like yes and like you know starts pushing his hand places and then he adjusts her belt and that's the end of the chapter, but I was actually really happy that didn't go the way I, I was fearing and stuff, and that he was actually really nice about it. And uh, yeah, go, go him, like you know, asking consent and stuff. So she, so she got a new pony and stuff, and apparently it's looking like he's not a total monster. So that's good and she should be getting away from Illyrio uh more monster he seems to care he got her the books and stuff so hopefully a little bit Viserys 
didn't get kicked by a horse, which <clears throat> that was like the biggest missed opportunity. Like you were on the horse, Danny. You were on the horse. It reads your mind. All you had to do was think, kick him in the head. But, you know, Team Viserys gets kicked in the head. But um, I will say, Illyrio played both of them and just banked on them. So hopefully he's gone, though, at this point. And that would be chapter 11, Daenerys. Well, Daenerys 2. I think I'm Tori Torrential. Um, I love you. Thanks for watching my show. Like and subscribe.